But as I was saying, I started talking to him about one o'clock um, in the evening. And I talked to him all the way through work and when I got home. You understand? It was just God just wanted me to keep talking to him. You know, and guess what? I made a friend in Christ. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying he's a full-fledged follower, but he's still on my page. He didn't, I didn't push him away. He's still there. You know, and he still reads my posts and still does this and does that. You see, it's your goal as a Christian to gather souls, to reap, to watch, to do all these things. Not necessarily to worry about everything. Like, I'm going to tell you something. I read a little glimpse of what's, what to come in, in Corinthians. And Paul was talking about in order to be away from the evil in this world, you have to leave this world. But he's not saying that. You're going to be here. You understand? I got a purpose for you to keep walking in the evil world. And not in those exact words, but that's what he's talking about. You're here for a reason. And God's going to protect you. Because guess what? As a Christian, you're going to see all kinds of evil. You're going to see all types of things. You understand? But it's not your goal to judge them. It's your goal to tell them the truth. And sometimes I tell people all the time, you got to wait for your opening. You got to wait for your opening. You can, People will come to you as a Christian. You ain't necessarily got to go up there and beat everybody down. Sometimes you may have to go tell somebody some things. But if you just wait patiently... You're going to be where you're supposed to be, right at the right time, no matter what. I'm going to tell you what happened to me this weekend. You know, I went to a funeral Saturday, and one of my cousins, younger cousin, he was graduating. Um, his mom decided to have a graduation uh, ceremony for him at, the, at her mother's house. And so I'm thinking it's Saturday. So... Friday, I was like, I mean, Saturday, I was like, I'm going to go to the funeral, then I'm going to go to the party. I'm going to go to the graduation ceremony. So I was like, okay. I went there. I'm thinking, for sure, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. And I went there, and there was a woman there. Never met a day in my life. And she was like, let us pray. She was like, I, I'm supposed to be here tomorrow, too. She was like, but I came early. She was like, I came early. You understand? She was like, I thought it was today, too. You understand? And then she was like, oh, well, since I'm here, I'm going to pray. And she said something that made so much sense. She's like, God, you knew who was going to be here beforehand. Everybody's here supposed to be here. And then she started praying for everybody that was there. You see, that's how God works in the spirit. I better thought I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. But I was at the right place at the right time. You understand? And everything went well. You understand? Just think about it. In the spirit, if you're being led by God, you're always going to be where you're supposed to be. You understand? You have to look at it like that. As you grow into Christian, you're going to start seeing things like that. Things are like that going to happen all the time. There's no coincidences in life as a Christian. You understand? There's no, hey man, what? no coincidences as a Christian. There's no coincidences in life. You are where you're supposed to be. Because guess what? You're asking for God to direct your path. You're asking and you're seeking God with your whole heart every morning. You understand? And he's going to direct you. Am I saying all the time you're going to be directed into a smooth path? No. You might have to go through a storm. But people try to go around the storm. Thinking, well, why would God lead me through this? You want to grow right. You want to grow. You want to see what you're, you're made of. And Christ wants to see what you're made of too. If you're faint not, you're going to grow stronger. Like I always tell this part, I love this verse in the Bible. When Jesus pulled Simon Peter to the side and he said, Simon, Peter, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. Basically saying, hey, he wants you. He said, but be not afraid. I have prayed for you. You understand? And when you are converted, strengthen the brother. That means as you grow in Christ and as you fill with the spirit, strengthen your brethren. You're going to go through some things because Satan desires to shift you like we. Well, I'm going to go back to my personal life. About two years ago, about two years ago, 
about two years ago. You know, I met some people. I was staying with my brother over here off Greelot Road. And I was sitting in the car talking to one guy. And he was like, he was like, you believe in God? I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you believe in the devil? I said, yes. He said, the devil wants you bad. Wow, that sounds familiar. Where have I heard that before? Simon Peter. Satan desires to sift you like wheat. You know why he wants you? You know why he's after Christians? He wants to stop their purpose. Just like Jesus said he has prayed for Peter, he's also prayed for us who came later. He said, thank you, Father, for the people you have given me. So none of them is lost. And the people that you have given me, basically in the future. So God, Jesus has prayed for all the people he chose. And Satan wants you. So you're going to go through some things. You're going to go through some trials and tribulations. But faint not. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. And through me, you will also. Do you understand? And when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. Do you hear me? It's not a competition, people. Strengthen the brethren. Strengthen the brethren. Strengthen the brethren. When you're converted, strengthen the brethren. You hear me? Once you start getting these stronger and stronger and God start giving you more spiritual gifts, be ready. Because Satan's going to be after you. He's going to be on your tail. He doesn't like Christians. He don't like followers of Christ. He tried to get Jesus himself first. Jesus was baptized and instantly he was tested 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Now just imagine what Jesus went through in regards to Satan. I'm sure it went was way worse than us. But the thing is, he said a day to the Lord is like a thousand years, a thousand years a day. That 40 days could have been 4,000 years for Jesus. He experienced everything. So guess what? We're going to experience everything too as a Christian. We're going to experience good things. You remember the first miracle he performed when he came back was turning water into wine. It was a, a wedding. No persecution. Just joy. And then you read on. He had a few times when he fed fish. People fished and everything was happy. But then you had saw sometimes when he getting persecuted. Do you understand? Even some of his enemies were those within his circle. Judas. You got to understand some things, people. Your life is not going to be peaches and cream as a Christian. But the stronger you are, the better you are. And the stronger you are, the more people God wants you to help. And the stronger you are, the more Satan is going to come and try to attack you. Have a blessed day. I hope these words touch you in a very special way. Let God lead you and direct your path throughout this day. Have a blessed one, people.